Amen. Good morning, church. Man, has anybody been outside in the last day and, like, lost at least five pounds of water weight? Yeah, I don't know about y'all. I, wow. And I hear it's supposed to get, like, 100 degrees or more tomorrow. So uh, hopefully you will be near a pool or the beach or something to just jump into and have some relief. So I don't know about y'all, but this morning is an awesome opportunity for us just to come together and say, you know what, God? You are more than enough, right? I don't know about, I, see, right now the, the parents in this room are going, oh my, what do I do with my kids for the rest of the summer? Oh, wait a minute. And then all the, all the, the students are like, school is out! Woo! Can, do you see that in them? They're right there. They're all like, they are just filled with so much overjoy. See, thank you, Cheyenne. She, she got my back. So it's all good. I think they're still, they're still kind of like, I don't have to go to school tomorrow or Tuesday or what? Awesome. So, no, I don't know about y'all. This is just, I mean, it's the, the, it is right there on the precipice, right on the edge of summertime. And I know when it comes to us as a church, Man, we've got some awesome things lined up. Tomorrow we're going to be doing our Memorial Day cookout, and we're just inviting people, even that are coming back off the beach and coming down 207, headed back to their house, whether it's East Palaka or Hastings or wherever it is, and say, come on in, have a free hamburger and hot dog. And uh, I hear some of you guys got some cornhole skills, right? Okay, just Michael. Okay, just Michael's got some cornhole skills, so we've got to, like, See if we can take them out and go from there. So that's tomorrow from 3 to 6. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have a good time. Jim's place is not open on Mondays, so we're not taking away any of their patronage. You know, we're not taking any food away from them. So we're just going to enjoy some time, chill out. And the, the, the office is AC'd. If you need to come on and you're worried about the heat, you can come on inside and we will enjoy. Uh, over in the old post office there off of 207. So I don't know about y'all, but, uh, you know, we are, we are right at the end of a series that we've been walking through called, what's it called? Anybody remember? Woo! Yes! You get the first burger off the grill tomorrow, okay? And all the fixings that you want, we'll just pie it on. So, so she actually was reading her bulletin beforehand. She was studying up. So, and it's up there, right? Thank you, tech team. So does that mean Laura's the only one that can read in this room? So that was all good. <laughs> That's at the top. So we've been walking through a five-part series called The Gospel-Shaped Family. And, uh, you know, when it comes to who we are, when it comes to the design that God has made us in every one of us, God has placed a God-shaped hole. I mean, everyone. That is our design that he's given to us, that which is um, his specific, intentional, that way that he makes eternity in us so that we might seek after him. And so in every one of us, he has shaped this hole in us that only he can fill. And so we've been talking about the family and how that all comes together, how his design has been for the husband and the wife, then the family that comes along, and how we all surround each other in the family of God. And so today we're kind of kind of move into something a little bit different, um, and that is how the gospel-shaped family, we're challenged. We're challenged by the culture around us, the current that the, that the culture around us tosses us to and fro that tries to make us into something that we've not then been designed to be. And so this morning, I want to just review Galatians 2.20, because that's our, our verse that we've been doing for all five weeks And that's this, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's the gospel shape. That it's not me anymore, but it's Christ who lives in me. And it's only the shape that God has designed that can fill that space in us, and that when it comes to his design, it's what his best is, his abundance, his fullness, so that we can then experience, man, I don't know about y'all, anybody need some peace today? 
Anybody need some joy? Anybody need some love and some patience, some goodness, some gentleness, some self-control? Man, that is missing in our society today. That's missing in our culture. It's only possible because God then, through his son Jesus Christ and the cross, gives us the chance to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so this morning, as we walk through it, we have a challenge, though, that comes to us. And that is that we have an enemy, an enemy that is trying to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's very deceptive. You would think that some of the messages that we hear and some of the things that are out there, they're very similar. They're, they're, and there's an angel of light that comes to deceive and to try to bring us to this place. That sounds good. So, yeah, let me, let me consider that. So, I don't know about y'all, but think about these crafty yet false messages that the culture around us tries to infiltrate into us. How about this one? The American dream is the blessing of Christianity. Think about that. God helps those who help themselves. Anybody heard that before? I was watching a popular TV show the other day. Right in the smack dab middle of that thing. That just blared out. I'm like going, man, that sounds good, right? How about this? God never gives you more than you can handle. <laughs> Woo! Hello then. Well, goodness gracious. <laughs> the Richards family is like, like wow. <laughs> okay. So how about this? Follow your heart and the Lord will lead you. Ask a teenage boy to follow his heart <laughs> and see if the Lord will lead him. Yeah, I got a story that I'm going to share with you just in a little while about that, okay? Um, how about this? When you surrender to God, then everything going to be all right. It's going to get better, right? When you, I mean, when, when you give it to God, man, everything's going to get better. I don't know about y'all, but those are, that's counterfeit gospel. That is something that sounds very similar, looks like it even fits, but it's not the gospel. It doesn't fit in the design that God has for us, in his truth, in his abundance, in his fullness. Nothing against Flagler Health Plus, by the way, Irish, okay? Just, just want to throw that out there. But uh, this morning, as we consider some of these crafty, deceitful, somewhat, I mean, they just sound right. But when it comes down to it, when it comes to that which is God's best, God's perfection, God's holiness, it misses the mark. And this morning, he wants to challenge us to let go of those counterfeits, to trust completely in the cross because we are crucified with Christ and it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And it's not by my strength, it's by his. So this morning, as we honor his genuine truth, let's stand to give God glory, to say, okay, God, I'm listening I'm not sure if I completely agree with this. I'm not sure if I'm all there yet, but that's okay because I'm here. I could be at the beach right now. I could be still in bed sleeping. I could be a lot of places, but I chose to be here this morning, so I'm listening. That's exactly where he wants you to be. Listen to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 13 through 16. Until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it's equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Let's pray. God, we are bombarded by messages. 
by branding. Lord, we're bombarded by, Lord, shifting thoughts. Lord God, people's agendas. And Lord, even by my own desires and passions. And so, Lord, today we're asking that, Father God, through your Holy Spirit, that, Lord, that we would not just listen, but, Lord, we would then be ready to take a step of faith. Lord, to trust you and say, God, when it comes to my family, we will serve the Lord. And, Lord God, if that means that that we're single, if that means that we're married, if it means that we've got a ton of kids, if we're adopted, Lord God, this is your family. Lord, because of who you are and because what you've done on the cross, Lord, we get to be brothers and sisters in Christ, heirs of your inheritance. And so, Lord God, today, we're just asking for your help to be a gospel-shaped family. And all God's people said, amen. As you take a seat, I don't know about y'all, but when it comes to holidays, what do you think of when you see this picture? Can y'all see that? I mean, what do you think of when you see that picture? I don't know about y'all, but but some some when I when I see this picture, some people you're 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 seeing the Titanic right now, right? Okay. Some of you some of you ladies are all kind of spreading out, getting your wings nice and open, and Leonardo DiCaprio is getting ready to hook. No, Iris is like, that's a skinny old white boy right there. Oh. So, I, but no, seriously, when it comes to that that. That scene, I mean, it is, right? It's just this iconic, it's all, it's all those kind of things. I mean, we just, man, cruising out there, just, just, I mean, but we know what happened to the Titanic, right? Anyway, how about did any of you get a little somber when you see that picture? I mean, I know that last week we, we honored Seth and the Williams family because he's taking that step. Of, of, of moving in as a Marine now that he's graduated from Pedro. And I know we've got, a, we got another graduate here today from, from Pedro and some that are getting ready to graduate next year and, and some others. And I don't know about y'all, but, but when I see a picture like that, my, my grandfather was a merchant Marine. And uh, his ship was, was blown up in World War II. And he, he was on the Pacific Ocean for three days, just floating, waiting to be rescued. So when I see that picture, there's a part of me that, that is, is somber and that has this love for those who gave so much for our country and the United States military. And th- this morning, we recognize that this holiday isn't just a place of being out of school and having a great meal and getting together, going to the beach, jumping in the pool. But without the sacrifice that was given, without those that served, we wouldn't be here today. The freedom to actually worship inside of a school is a gift that many have given us. And tomorrow, actually, at our Memorial Day cookout, we're going to take some time. And not only is Melanie going to to sing the national anthem, but we're going to pray. We're going to lift up our country in a way that says, okay, God. Wow, without you and without those that have followed your example, we couldn't be here. And so maybe others of us think of that ferry that on that vacation, you go to that remote location that you can only get there by a boat. And you get away from all the hustle and the bustle of all your work and and the life that you live daily. And you just get to get away, I don't know. But not only does that picture kind of bring some memories of my grandfather and some of the sacrifices that he made, but to me, my stomach gets a little tight when I see that picture. Because when it comes to that, my dad, on holiday weekends, would challenge me to go deep sea fishing. That's right. Some of you already know where I'm going. Because, my, I mean, my dad was an amazing fisherman. My grandfather kind of passed it on to him and, and uh, just loved getting out on the ocean. Or actually, it was uh, Tampa Bay. We'd get out there. And, uh, but he challenged one time when we went out 
uh, on a holiday weekend, and we went out deep sea fishing. And I didn't catch any fish, but I chummed up the water so everybody else on the boat could catch a, bu- a bunch of fish. I mean, I, there's, I don't know if it's my balance or what. I mean, I get up in a plane and I get, wherever it is, I can just get really queasy when it comes to getting tossed around, right? When you get to that place of whatever it is, and, and for me, I, you know, you know how when you start to feel like that, you're like, I got this, uh-uh. I'm going to be all right, I'm going to be all right. And oh, uh, it just got bad. And, and here I was kind of, you know, walking through this, this whole thing. And, I, you know, here all these people are catching fish, and I'm just trying to catch my bearings, I'm just like, everything's moving, and I'm just trying to, I mean, come on. And we're like five miles out. I mean, it was probably more like two, but still, it was a long way out. And that minute it was like hours to get back, and nobody was going to take me back in order for them to finish the day, right? So I did just grin and bear it. It was, it was horrible. It was one of those things. And, and this morning... The first challenge that I believe Paul gives the church of Ephesus was this question. Are we experiencing motion sickness from the counterfeit currents of our culture? I don't know if y'all heard that in the verses, but the getting tossed to and fro by the waves and the winds of just every little doctrine that comes around that people grab a hold of. I mean, doesn't it seem like one day our leaders seem to be absolutely for one idea, and then the next they seem to be representing the opposite viewpoint? I mean, when it comes to what's popular or trendy or rebranded and relevant, it seems like we're on a boat getting tossed everywhere by the winds of latest opinions, polls, current research. I mean, one day I read that eggs were good for you to eat. The next day, eggs were bad for you to eat. I mean, it's just all this research out there tells you all these, I mean, what in the world do you, can you believe? And just like I learned before I went out on the high seas again with my dad, the church needs to put on some stabilizing patches, right? Those of us that have that, that motion sickness stuff, man, you, you get that little, that little patch, you stick it on there, it just, man, it's, it's nice. I mean, those of us that, that can't ever go deep sea fishing can all of a sudden can get out on the water. You can actually catch some fish <laughs> or get a really nice sunburn, one of the two. But no, I mean, think about that. You see, these stabilizing patches, they help to counter the effects of our culture that says Jesus is one of the ways. And that the Bible was a map that was good for those in ancient Middle East. So it sounds good, but it's not the whole truth. In Ephesians 4.13 it says, Until we all attain to the unity of the faith, the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Jesus. You see, this verse gives us the stabilizing patch of one of Anastasia's core values. This is something that we make sure that, man, this is what we base everything on. If you take this away, everything else crumbles. If you don't have that which is the fill that we've all been designed, if Jesus isn't the way, if we're not holding on to that, if we're not asking God to really help us to trust him and him alone, everything else is going to fall apart. Verse 14 points us to another stabilizing patch. And that's another one of our Anastasia core values. And that's this. The Bible is the map. I mean, going out on that deep sea fishing trip, I mean, there's the ledge, right? How many of you have ever been out to the ledge? I mean, I know Josh has been even farther out than the ledge. But, I mean, we're talking about where the fish are. And when it comes down to it, You've got to know the spots. You've got to know the direction on how to get there. Because, I mean, the ocean is huge. You could just get lost. The Bible is the map. When it comes to the design that God's given us, when it comes to that which is God-breathed, able to instruct, able to reprove, able to encourage, there's only one love letter that God's given us to give us the instruction and the directions of how and where to go. It says, 
Verse 14, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about. And here it is. Every wind of doctrine. Human cunning, craftiness, deceitful schemes. There's a lot of messages that are out there today that sound sweet, but are poisonous. And that bring us to that place of not experiencing God's best. See, these two core values have kept families afloat for centuries. They've helped us to weather the storms of shifting cultures around the world. I mean, not just here in America, but around the world. In places just like in China, where they're blowing up churches. Places like the Middle East, where if they even find out that you're a Christian, then they come and hunt you down. I mean, we're talking about people that in the midst of those core values that they know that, you know what? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. No matter what happens in my life, there's stability. There is peace in the storm. So here at ACE, we want to encourage you. I mean, we would love for you when it comes to not just core values, not just as we walk down the hallway and we see them and as we open up our bulletins and we, we you know, we, we walk through them pretty regularly around here because we really believe that they're important because they're from Scripture, <laughs> they're from the map. But we really believe it's something that we step into, that we walk through, that we trust all throughout the week. Let's just say you only breathe in oxygen once a week. How well would you survive? Let's just say that every once in a while, you decided to have a meal. But eh, it's really no big deal. I don't really need nourishment, but mm, Mondays and Saturdays, I'm good. Think about that, church. God is calling us to trust him, to breathe in, to receive that which is his nourishment and we have, there's free resources out there. I mean, we live in a, in a culture that does have some really awesome things. And they've designed things like version apps that are free that you can open up God's word. And on your phone or on your computer or wherever you're at, you can allow the devotions that God has given people and inspiration. But also to read God's word wherever you are. You can even throw it in your car, hook it up, and just play it as you drive. And allow God's word to challenge you, to inspire you, to help you get from one moment to the next. Because I don't know about y'all, 24 hours is enough for me to fall flat on my face. This morning, church, as we walk through, I mean, whether it's the right now media, the, the free resource that we've given you, there's so much. If, if you don't have that back at our Life Group's table, there's cards that you can just see how there is this resource that you can then step into. Much less, Bibles are everywhere. And for us just to say, okay, God, I'm going to listen and I'll let you inspire. Because Jesus is the way and the Bible is the map. You know, decades before Lilith and I met, on another holiday weekend when I was in high school, remember I said I was going to go there. I was invited to attend a church skating party. Now, I'm dating myself right now because, I mean, like, the, like there's really, are there roller rink, rinks anymore? You know, there's one in Orange Park, I know, that we've gone to. I've checked it out, right? But they're like, they used to be everywhere. They used to be so much everywhere that <coughs> my church that, that I would be invited to from some of my friends because I wasn't a Christian growing up and you know, we just kind of went to church on Christian, and, on Christian, on Christmas and Easter, and so whatever. But there was this church that some of my friends would invite me to, and they had a roller rink on their second floor of their church. I was like, sweet. I'm going there. And sure enough, I mean, my skating skills were limited. I mean, those of you that had roller skated back in the day, when you made a turn, did you do this? You know what I'm talking about? Okay. There's the, I mean, those of you that skate, you can do the push, right? 
But the people that got some skills are like, crossover, baby. Yeah, I'm a crossover. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? I mean, those of you who have never roller skated before, if you get some skates on, I'm not talking about inline skates because I'm going to fall flat on my face regardless. But, man, you get some roller skates on me, and I can push. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can push. But, man, as soon as you try to get me to do this, bam! I'm going to fall flat on my face. Well, even though I didn't have a whole lot of skills, there was a girl named Brenda Norton. And I found out that she was going to be the skating rink official that night. And she would be in the center of the rink, making sure that everybody did what was right. Or should I say what was left? Because when you skate, everybody takes a left, just like NASCAR. Right? 500 times, you just take a bunch of lefts. You just keep on going. You don't know what to do. If you have to turn right, you don't know what to do. <laughs> but, man, I can turn left. And so, sure enough, she was, she was in the center, and I was like, man, Brenda, whoo, check me out. Bam. No, I was kidding. I just trying to get her attention all night, you know, try, weaving and bobbing and, you know, oh. Uh, so, I, all that kind of stuff. And at that time... I was about 5'9 and a buck 10, right? But I had 12 size feet. People call me skis. That was one of my nicknames. Because my feet got there two days before I ever did. I hadn't grown into the rest of my body, and so my feet were just long, skinny rails like the rest of my body. And, and just, I, you know, so I went to the... You know, you go up to the desk and you say, I'd like a pair of, pair of 12s. I mean, this, they, they didn't have any. I mean, they said, oh, the closest thing we got is 10s. But Brenda's out there. Is what I'm thinking. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I threw on those skates. I laced them up. I mean, there's no, th- there no way they were going to come off my feet anyways. But still, I laced them up. I got out there and I started doing me some left turns, some left pushes, right? Just going around and going around. Man, can I tell you what my feet looked like after about two hours, two, three hours of skating? Because I was not about to get off of that skating rink. I mean, I'm, she's going to see me. She's going to, I mean, I'm going to get her attention. I stayed on that thing the whole time. I was in pain. But something developed on my feet during those few hours that night. It started off as a blister, but then eventually I think it actually, in that short period of time, became a callus. I mean, it, it, was, it, it started to harden. It started, I mean, it was this, it's the way that your body kind of protects. I know Michael has been Learn, you know, relearning how to play the guitar. And in doing that, what happens to your fingers as you strum those guitars? What do you get? Calluses. Exactly. It's a little bit of a protection. But in this case, when you look into these verses, the second challenge that Paul presents to the people of Ephesus was one that I now pose to us. Are we becoming calloused by the selfishness of the culture around us? I mean, look at Ephesians 4. The next few verses after 16, verses 17 through 19 says this. Now this I say and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do. That was their culture around them. It was people that did not, non-Israelites that did not follow after Christ. And the futility of their minds, they're darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that's in them due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous. And have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. You see, some of the challenges that the gospel-shaped family is facing today centers around how we interact with one another and the world around us. I mean, think about this. In our culture around us, I mean, what about digital disconnection? I mean, in a day and age when we literally can be, quote, connected to somebody on the other side of the world all the time, how close How connected in a real relationship do we actually allow ourselves to be? Because I don't know about you, I don't put what's really happening in my life on my social media. It's just what? 
the good stuff. Well, what I think everybody thinks is the good stuff, right? I don't know about y'all, but gender identity and polarizing politics and profiteering, prosperity, I mean, all these things, I mean, they are messages, they are things that are bombarding us, they are things that are surrounding us all the time. And how do we as a church speak the truth in love to those trying to fit a square into a round hole? I mean, let's think about it. Instead of face-to-face relationships, how do we encourage real connection in a culture of selfies, cyberbullying, and pornography? I mean, there is so much out there that's tearing us apart, not bringing us together. That its intention is to isolate us as opposed to draw the family together. When it comes to politics, isn't it interesting that the main battlegrounds of abortion, immigration, and health care make a huge impact on the family? I mean, each of these areas, no matter what side you end up going on, not to mention the fact that if you're on this side, man, and they're on that side, you are enemies. There is the arena of being able to communicate in such a way that listens and then therefore lives alongside of and and works with as opposed to saying us versus them. Last but not least, I mean, have we become so callous by the mind mentality that steps on others on the way up the greedy ladder versus listening to the spirit And the generosity of God that calls us to be last so that the needy receive Jesus' peace treaty. Because there are people around us all the time. In this community, 80% of the children are at or below the poverty level. Church, we are called to be generous. We are called to be the hands and feet of Christ. We are called to just come alongside of and to love one another. And it's one reason why even though, yes, we have almost 30 acres of property over on 207 that God has blessed us with and that we are working through a process of a master site committee that's recently been voted in by our church. And and yes, we are working towards that. But right now, we get to bless Southwoods Elementary School. Not only by being here week after week in order to pray over and to worship God and put him on the throne, but you know what? Through our finances because we, we, they don't give us this place for free. But by your generous giving that you allow yourself, and I know that by giving to the church, that means that you have to sacrifice in other areas. But that sacrifice goes and loves on students so that now they have a community center here that comes alongside of them, whether it's health, whether it's clothes, whether it's food, whether it's counseling. There's a place now where the family gets to be blessed. Church, that's part of that which is the generosity that God's called us to be as Anastasia Church Elkton. And whether or not it's tomorrow or next year, When we move over to those 30 acres on 207 across from Sykes Farm, guess what we're still going to be doing? Loving the families here. That doesn't change. So as we consider this, as we work through it, I really believe that when it comes to the more we compromise with the world's plus, the more we become calloused from the Lord's cross. The messages that we, that sound good, that even to the initial season is something that seems right even, but is not based upon the gospel. It is not, the fullness does not fill the abundance that God has designed for us. The more callous that we are going to be, because what does a callous do? I mean, it hardens and it keeps us from feeling the whole impact of what we're touching, right? The callous, that whole impact that God has for us, 
is this community. That whole impact that he has for us is this family. That whole impact that he has for us is our homes and our neighbors and those that God has in his design has said, I love you. And because of that, I'm going to fill you because you are crucified with Christ. It's no longer me, myself, and I that live, but it's Christ that lives in us. And just like he gave himself for us, guess what we're supposed to do? Give ourselves for others. So as we consider this, the calluses that are keeping us from feeling the whole impact of what we're touching, you know, just like I had to put some moisturizing pads on the feet to bring healing from those blisters and calluses when I went skating, Ephesians 4 shares how God wants to soften our hardened hearts. You see, the gospel-shaped family regularly needs to apply these moisturizing pads on the last four of our Anastasia core values. And listen to this in Ephesians 4, 15 and 16. They highlight them. One being love is our greatest command. You see, when we live out the gospel, we speak the truth in love and also build each other up in God's unconditional love. Ephesians 4.16 highlights our last three core values of disciple-making is our mission, serving is our privilege, and every person is important. Because it states, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it's equipped, which each part is working properly. Did you hear that? Whole? Every? Each? Part? See, that is to help us understand that, you know what? Disciple-making, we're not just here to to be poured into, but God wants to pour out of us into others so that they also become disciples of Christ. It also means that serving, it's our privilege. It's not something that we have to do. It's something that we get to do because when we receive the Holy Spirit, he fills us with gifts. He fills us with the fruit of the Spirit. He fills us with himself, and that then therefore overflows in us. And they see that, wait a minute, wow, just like Jesus didn't come to be served, he came to serve. Wash people's feet. That word calloused us all. Get up. Stank rank feet. That he loved people through. That he moisturized. Even with his tears. You see, this, this morning, church, when we submit to God's spirit, he equips us. And he holds us together, and then we realize that our God-designed importance is so much greater than this hour and a half that we have on Sunday mornings. As we close this morning, I really, truly, I know what's been happening to me, and that is committing to living out these core values, these, this gospel shaped family message that the word of God brings to me, to my family, to my friends, to the neighbors, to the coworkers. We just had new neighbors move in right next door to us. And Lilith and I have been praying that they wouldn't be crazy people. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but God calls us to say, wait a minute, those are... They're important. Every person is important. No matter what comes along, whether or not they like your dog or not. That's God's mission for you. And those people need Jesus' love just as much as you do. So this morning, are we allowing God to shape us through his gospel? And this morning, we actually have an opportunity that we do periodically, and it's called a Next Steps Luncheon. And some of you, God's, maybe it's been for the last few days or the last few weeks or the last few months, but he's been knocking on the door of your hearts, and there has been this gospel shape that he's been gently but also speaking the truth in love, being very clear to you about. And that is, Are you a part of a family of God? 
Have you ever come to that place of saying, you know what, hey, I go to church on Sunday mornings, or you know what, I, I give some time, I serve, I, you know, I, I might even every once in a while throw some money in the plate. I, you know, but what about the intimacy of a relationship with God? Because, wow, brother, there's nothing better. And this morning, if God has been moving in you to take that next step of faith, to say, okay, God, I don't want to just walk and do the motions every week. But I want moment by moment, breath by breath, to be something that's yours. That I surrender. That I give up. That I say I will be crucified with Christ. Therefore, I will no longer live. But Christ, just come and live in me. And then just like you gave yourself for me, I want to give myself for others. Maybe that next step is to say, you know, I, I've surrendered to Christ. There's been a moment in my life where I've truly and authentically and intentionally said, okay, God, here, forgive me of my sins, change my mind, and help me turn away from that which is the cult, not just the culture, but the, the messages and all the things around me that try to steal, kill, and destroy. But maybe this morning God's saying, okay, that relationship that I have with you, I want you now to invest in others. To allow th this church even, Anastasia Church Elkin, or Anastasia, to be the place where we get to love one another and then love on this community to people that need Jesus. There's a couple ways that you can do that. Today, there's, we're getting ready to sing a song, and I'm so thankful for, for Michael being with us here this morning. I, I know that Phil, by the way, thank you for praying for Phil, because over the last year, and really even a couple years, the house has been destroyed twice by the hurricanes. And one of the reasons why he's not here today is because they're taking the last steps in order to move into their rebuilt house. And Abel, yeah, that's right. We can praise God for that. But also taking a rest and saying, okay, you know what, whoa, we need a break. <laughs> and so as a family, they're doing uh, some things together. But, you know, when it comes to the ability for our praise team to come and, and just bring us to the throne room of God, wow. We, that's coming forward and saying, you know what, God, here, I just bow myself before you and say, God, here, here I am, send me into that which you call me to be. Or maybe afterwards, we have a next steps table right in the back of the room. And maybe we would go back there and say, hey, you know, I want to take my next step in my relationship with Christ. I want to surrender. I need to get baptized. Or I want to join this church. Or I want to invest my life into the missions, the ways of that which the world needs around me to love on people that have no hope. Whatever that is this morning, there's another option that you have today, and that's this. My wife has prepared and gotten together a really awesome lunch. Publix, it's good stuff. Because shopping is a pleasure. <laughs> and so, just saying, especially on a busy weekend like this weekend. <laughs> that, come on, and you know, it's so informal, it's so chill. I mean, AC's in there. We just gather and we just get to know each other a little bit better. We get around a table just like Jesus did. And we get to know each other better. And we say, hey, what's God doing in your life? How can we come alongside of you? And how can we encourage each other to take those next steps of faith? So right afterwards, if you want to go on next to Jim's place right there on 207 to our office, which is the same place that we're going to do the Memorial Day cookout tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Come on and let's just have a good lunch together. But either way, whatever those ways are, one of those steps that you might want to take, let's pray. Lord Jesus, man, the waves are intimidating. Lord, the wind is swirling. Lord God, the pressure of life around us, Lord God, can be overwhelming sometimes. Lord, you're here because it says where two or three are gathered in your name, you're in the midst. 
And Lord Jesus, we're asking, Father God, that we are listening to your spirit, that we are being molded and shaped as a family by your gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you, and we're asking that whatever it is that you're challenging us to let go of from this, the currents of this culture, and instead to receive the stability and, Lord, Lord, the blessing of your presence. Lord, we just say, hear God. Use me. Fill me and change me. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Let's stand. Whatever God is moving in you, whether it's the Next Steps table or coming forward and praying or even joining us at the Next Steps luncheon afterwards, let's go there. Let's pray. Let's sing.